Hello, welcome to my flat. This is what I like to call the viewfinder. Uh, for those of you unaware, hi, my name is Evan Edinger, and I fought really hard to get a flat of my own. I had a really stressful period last year, but after a huge battle, I finally got it, and this is a tour of the flat that I currently live in. It took me a whole year, basically. I thought I'd just do a flat tour as soon as I moved in, but then it would have just been an empty living room, an empty bedroom, it's pretty much fully unfurnished. So now after spending a year here, I've made it my own. I want to share that with you. So without further ado, let's start off in the kitchen. For those of you that have been following my channel for quite a long time, you'll know that before 2017, I pretty much didn't know how to cook anything. I mean, I was a microwave meal guy. I did one trip to Germany, taught myself how to cook, and now I love cooking. I love cooking so much. This kitchen space, I've really been able to make my own. This knife rack, it means a lot to me because it was the first thing I've ever put up in a space of my own that involved like drilling into a wall. My coffee making station over here, we have my olive oil and canola oil so I can quickly add things to dishes I'm cooking on here. In terms of the cabinets and such, I painted the walls and the cabinets simply white by Benjamin Moore, which is a warm, creamy white, and the bottom is Hail Navy by Benjamin Moore. I wanted a two-tone system so that it just looked a bit nicer. I also installed some custom RGB strips on the top and bottom. The bottom acting, obviously, as task lighting, whereas the top is more like an accent, which looks especially nice at night. Everywhere I've ever lived, I've always just had a drawer where you throw in all the pots and pans and they get scratched up and I just hated that. So. I installed this pot rack, which now allows me to just grab everything as I go. And then this is where I keep all of my spices. It took me quite a long time, but it was well worth the investment. I've got German at the bottom there, so I know the translation, and it can help me out when I'm learning my German. Dishwasher and such, microwave down low, and some cookbooks. This is essentially my kitchen. I spend a lot of time here. I love it. But the first place you actually missed when you walked in was the entrance. And I have no storage here, so when a friend comes by and they need to hang up a coat, I figured if I put a wall-mounted coat rack here, huzzah, doesn't take up any space in the ground and I actually have a place to put people's coats, which is quite nice. And also in the entrance, just before I leave the house, I like to check my hair and face, make sure everything is in order over there, hang my keys and Dana Gelatin's glasses and such, the, the necessities of life. Moving on, we've also got the final part here, which is just a extra kitchen island for more storage, which has a cutting board on the top. So I'm gonna be using this for some cooking videos in the future. And lastly, I installed these nice spotlights at the top just to give myself a bit more lighting, especially when I'm cooking at night. And that, my friends, is the kitchen. So now, after we make the food, it's time to get eaten. Let's move on down to my dining room. Now I know dining rooms aren't really that popular of a thing with the current generation. I feel like most people just like cooking their food, sitting down, eating and watching the TV and such. But especially for holidays such as Thanksgiving or having some friends over and wanting to cook for them, which I very much love doing, you gotta have a dining room table. So for this area, I basically went for a white upper with oak bottoms, matching with oak bottoms on the chair as well. However, when it comes to this nice little radiator cover back here, I did the opposite. So I went with oak at the top, white on the bottom. I got some volcanic ash from one of the Canary Islands I visited for that show I was on. And also, I just really love the look of this lamp. It's like an Edison bulb, but it is a smart one as well, which means that I can dim it or increase it depending on how much light I actually need. I like to use it as accent lighting when I'm sitting in the living room, just because it just looks so much nicer. And you'll notice the navy of the kitchen also carried through on this part of the island. Now, a very small spot, actually, something I really appreciate that I've got here is just a standard Ikea stool. Even though I'm very tall and I can easily touch the ceiling, when you're trying to like paint ceilings, which I've painted every one of these ceilings, doing this for so long does hurt. So having a stool that doubles as a place to keep my plant stuff, amazing, also hides my robot vacuum. So at night when I have him clean, he just kind of scuttles out from under there and does his business. All right, and now that that's finished up with the dining room, let me show you my favorite part of the house my living room.
Everywhere else I've ever lived, I've never really had a living room of my own. Everything was always confined into one space. But being able to develop a space primarily just for relaxing, enjoying myself, maybe watching videos or having conversation space with friends has been just so, so amazing. This was like something I dreamed about for the months I was trying to get this place. I meticulously planned every item in this room to make sure it all matched up. And I think I did a pretty good job with it. So most modern interior design and decorating usually says you should always stick with full neutrals, whites, grays, beiges, and then have a small splash of color. But I found that very boring. And so I just wanted it to be less like that and more of a modern space, but also bright and colorful. So that way it's kind of like living room. I'm living, I'm not dead. So I went with a teal couch to cement it. It's such a nice vibrant blue. Also we have here a nice yellow mustard chair matching that color scheme. Even the rug has that going throughout. We have some asymmetrical wavy little stripes here with more normal ones throughout, which balances out with my living room blinds. By the way, all the blinds in my house were provided by Hillary's blinds. They are phenomenal. They did everything for me and they match my space perfectly. Essentially, we have some asymmetrical waves going on while also having the stripes, which carries on throughout this entire space. And they're also smart controlled. So now that I have these blinds down, nobody's able to see in. However, I'm still getting quite a nice amount of light through and you can actually still see out because there's these cute little pinholes in them. It's really, really cool, especially in the evening. So basically at eight in the morning, every single morning, I wake up to the blinds rising, I get natural light in my bedroom and it's really, really nice. And also when I'm in the living room in the evening, let's say the sun is shining through, I wanna play some video games, I can actually just tell Siri to put the blinds down, boom, I can actually look at the TV. So obviously I went for teal and yellow for the fabrics and such, but in terms of the materials, I went with more of a walnut throughout, so walnut and white for the coffee table. And if we turn around, we also have a walnut and white TV console where I keep my PS4 and lots of games and films in there, as well as some more modern matte black looking lights to match with everything else. One of my absolute favorite parts of the living room is this feature wall. So originally this was just a standard cold white wall. I painted all the walls in the entire living room space with Benjamin Moore's Simply White, which just really gets a nice warm white. It feels a lot more cozy than a standard stoic cold white. And then also I used small little slats of wood at exact angles that I worked out mathematically to make a nice chevron pattern. So with the light on the TV playing in the back, it creates interesting shadows and it just makes your eye go all the way up. It feels much more interesting than a standard white wall. It took me a lot of time. If you haven't seen it, I made a video on my second channel on how I did this, but well worth the effort. Every, every time someone sees us, they're like, oh my God. And I'm like, thank you, it took so long. I can't believe I haven't even talked to you about this lamp yet. It looks great. It adds a nice curvature to the space since a lot of the stuff here is like more hard lined, less super modern interior design. But I got this to kind of soften it up, add a nice bit of playful curves to it and to give me, it's, it's almost like a pendant lamp, but hidden away. I can't believe we've not talked about the balcony. I spent quite a long time making this place into a place that in the summer I'd want to hang out in. And so I've got myself here a place where I like to have my morning coffee. I went for an extension of the living room. I didn't want it to feel like a cold metal barred area that you'd only go out on if you needed a smoke or whatever my friends would do when they're out here. So I put down these nice Ikea slats, which add a nice warm wood tone and little fake grass. So I usually do yoga out here, especially when it's a bit warmer. And the entire border of the balcony is surrounded by these nice white stones, which yet again, makes it feel a lot more natural and less like you're in some sort of balcony in a flat. I took some time with it. I don't know if you could tell, but the flooring actually is like a little yin yang pattern of the grass and the brick. And this little storage doubles as a chair, just put some cushions on it. Either way, it's a really lovely space and I've enjoyed editing videos. I don't enjoy how windy it is here. <laughs> Right here, the final bit in my living room is my display cabinet. Now, I wanted a cabinet that gave me a lot of clothes storage while also giving me a place to display a bit more of my personality, little fun things and things that I've enjoyed, and also some just basic Evan history. I still have my original actuarial tables book from a university here. I am from the diner capital of the USA, so I've got my little recipe book for diner food. And lastly, YouTube for dummies. <laughs> I got this at my first job in the UK and I thought it was hilarious because even then it was a year old and it was incredibly dated. Just look at the way, do you like President Bush?
Pikachu that I got in Tokyo Pokemon store. Finally, we do have these lovely little photos. Uh, this is the day that I got my British citizenship, very proud. Uh, this is a nice little photo of me and my friends. And then even this photo here is actually in the color scheme of the living room, because I was thinking about it when I took that photo three years ago. I, oh, I wasn't. And this is one of the longest living plants I've ever had. This pothos here goes all the way through into the next part of the house, the hallway. Uh, do, do, do. So, uh, welcome to my hallway. It's honestly a hallway. It's not meant to be that much, but I went a bit extra slightly when it comes to certain materials. So, like I said, I wanted the living room space to be more of a modern, colorful place, and I wanted my bedroom to be a bit more of a muted space with more organic, natural materials. And so with the matte black and metals going down in the living room, here, I wanted to signify that we were going from a more modern black to a more natural oak. I have these because I feel like these jackets perfectly match and I actually wear those quite often. And then here as well, we have some oak vinyl shelves of three albums I really liked. Nurture by Porter Robinson, Dive by Tycho, and Everything in Transit by Jack's Mannequin. And as we're transitioning into my more muted color space of the bedroom, on the floor here, you'll notice that's the color scheme we're gonna be going into when we eventually get into the bedroom. Not quite yet, just met you. My friend Dodie knit this home sweet home thing for me when I first was able to get this house and I really love it. I love the texture, it adds the space, but I know you drank a bit. It's time to introduce you to the guest bathroom. I honestly would much rather it be a storage facility. I'd love this to just be a place to put things. However, it is where my guests like to stare at my Smash Bros trophy. You know, gotta catch them in the one room I know they're gonna visit, or this shitty watercolor original of that fateful day, me, Dodie, and Connie. Wow, what an amazing adventure. It's a bathroom, fellas. However, I did choose to paint the opposite of the kitchen here. I went with a dark navy called Mysterious from Benjamin Moore for the upper, and then the lower is that Benjamin Moore Simply White, that warm white, while also, putting these boards back here to give it a nice board and batten look, just because it looks so much nicer and more refined in a bathroom. It felt way too gray with the way that the tiles were. So each of these is basically a sticker, which I put down and it brightens up the space just so much. In terms of the little artwork that I've got here, this is one of my favorite prints I've ever taken called Foggy Boat, which was part of my original series of prints that I was selling. And then the one on the other wall here is the one that sold out actually. This one's called Lunar Cycle and it's a photo from Harrods and Kensington. And it's just such a nice pop of orange, teal and a lovely reflection. I really love this one. I just really love taking photographs and I love being able to print them and portray them. Now that we've moved on from the guest bathroom, my ensuite bathroom, it's a bathroom, my friend. Because if you just open the door, the lights come on automatically. It is now a nice warm white and not 100% because we're getting towards the later evening right now. And if it was around midnight or two in the morning, the lights in here are even dimmer. Enough to see what you're doing, but not enough to blind you. It's so much better than having to blind yourself in the middle of the night having to pee than have them be a nice warm tone. As with the other bathroom, I went with the same design. This just adds, I think, a lot more of a luxury type vibe to the bathroom, despite the fact I did do it myself. Now, these prints here are some photos that I've taken. This here is Liverpool, Bold Street, when I lived there for a month, and I had COVID when I took this shot, so boy. Uh, this right here is the Q Railway Bridge in Chiswick, and that's my friend Dodie just standing there. And lastly, this photo is of my friend Bliss walking through Chiswick House and Gardens. Just some nice ethereal shots to kind of give the vibe of this relaxing ensuite bathroom. I put this type of thing here so when you're doing your business, you can put your phone down. How useful is that? But as soon as the lights come on in this bathroom, automatically I've got this diffuser coming on as well. And the reason for this is essentially, don't you hate it when you go to someone's house, you gotta do number two and then it stinks and you're like, oh God, this is embarrassing. Gotta try and figure out a way, maybe stay in there a little longer, unless that's just me. Basically, when the lights come on, this diffuser comes on and puts a nice smell of the current one is into the woods, though I also have liquid sunshine, and it makes the bathroom smell really, really lovely, and it stays on for 15 minutes after someone leaves the room. So that way, if someone else comes in, they don't smell anything negative, they just smell this nice diffuser, but it's not running at all times. So that took a bit of time to code in my little automations and home kit, but it was well worth it. This is my absolute favorite, eau de toilette. This one's Huel. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just putting soylent on me. It's actually a Welsh word called Huel. It is 
oh, by far such an incredible smell. I love it so much. And those of you who bought some A3 prints from me when I was selling photographic prints might recognize this scent as I sprayed it in everyone's box so that they were like, oh, every single time I shower, I do squeegee it and also make sure to spray an anti-lime scaling thing at the end of my shower, just to make sure it maintains this nice level of cleanliness. Uh, here we go, just imagine, except if you were imagining me in the shower, I'd actually be like this. I'm a shower sitter. Turns out there's not a lot of people like me, but I just like it. It's much more comfortable. I don't know why you're not sitting in the shower. Saves you a lot of energy and it's more relaxing. Now that we've moved on from the bathroom, I think it's time I show you my studio. It took me a really long time to get this space the way I wanted. This was actually the final room in the whole house that I organized in the right way. It just felt like I really wanted to make sure it was really useful for working. This over here is a standard dresser drawer that I got for free when I moved in, but it was a very ugly white and gray. And so I took the time to paint the top black and put contact paper on here to make it look walnut because now it matches perfectly with my desk and also with the walnut and black shelves that I've got up here. My lava lamp I've had for ages. And then the only award I've ever received as a YouTuber from an outside organization from YouTube. I actually won an award for journalism in Croatia. So I'm, I'm just actually proud. I have one, one thing like that. And my play buttons, of course, over there. A photo that I took in Santa Monica. I do have my piano set up here to basically have it out so that I can practice it. We have my printer where I do all of my printing. We've got some other photos that I've taken in Yosemite, in the Canary Islands, and also this lovely one I got of Big Ben. Also, you might be wondering what this type of thing is. This is a sound panel. It dampens the sound and reflections through the room. I can just turn this light on, have the camera set up on the C-stand. I can actually just spin over here and this is my new setup for where I'm streaming. I really love the space and I love that I can just basically do what I want, make my stuff and then boom, put it out and now it's a nice clean space. And over here, we've got this cute little skatist. This is an Ikea pegboard. Here's some old merch I used to sell. This is my, <laughs> my the current state. It's just kind of uh, piled in there. These are like my custom made boxes for my photos. And I really love them. I need to sell them just so I can clear out this space really. I am a trackpad guy. A lot of people think that's crazy, but I just really love for editing in Final Cut Pro, all the different gestures that I can do. I do actually find it quite useful to be able to stand and get stuff done as well, just so I'm not necessarily necessarily sitting all day and getting bad posture. I'll try and put affiliate links in the description for lots of the items that I've found in my home if you like them enough and you want to support me by getting it for your own house, but especially the stuff in my studio. Things like my studio kit, like how I make these videos, the camera, the audio equipment. Sadly, this mushroom though, no link for him, okay? I got him in Munich at a little specialty shop. I love him. I'll probably be doing an individual desk tour video in the future. If you're interested, please leave me a comment if you're into that sort of creatory stuff, because I'd like to hear from you, because I love creating, so I would love to share how I go about doing that. However, I think it's about time now we move on to my bedroom. I've had this for ages, got it in New Zealand at Hobbiton. Obviously, if you're a big fan of Lord of the Rings like me, you're gonna have stuff like this all over the place. So yes, welcome to my bedroom. The entirety of the floor, I rolled this lovely jute rug under it, which adds that really natural texture, which also matches this washing basket here for the bedding. I went with linen because it is one of those materials that just feels so soft the more you wash it. I love the lived in look that it brings to my room. Now, I'm not the type of guy that has a thousand pillows. However, I think five is a good amount. And we have these really cool Ikea lanterns that look like lanterns. Like, I love it so much. Like, I used to use these in Scouts all the time. So I really love that I was able to get a couple of these for the space for that more natural outside type of vibe I was going for. Also, we have here a natural French cane plant pot, which I specifically got to match my French cane style pendant lamp, which also matches the final piece, the French cane little tray over here where I keep my candles. In terms of other plant pot stuff, we have a nice orange here. We have a nice leather to upper here, which matches my little leather seat right here. I've got a map of my hometown right there. This avocado I planted for a video at this point, like four years ago, actually. This photo I took of Yosemite where I really enjoyed the lighting, the way it looked is very like rock, tree, rock, you know, it's a firefall. I also threw these extra mirrors in here just to give a bit more height to the bedside table layout. Now, when it comes to the blinds in this room, for these ones, I went with 
Yet again, Hillary's Blinds provided. Thank you very much, Hillary. <laughs> I actually don't think that's her name. Now these ones have a natural linen texture, which matches the bedding. So this is the vibe usually in the evening in my bedroom. My big light is still on, but it's so dim that it just provides a nice accent. At the bottom of my bed, running along the entire thing, is another LED strip, just like the kitchen, as well as a separate one that runs behind my bed. I actually have a motion sensor under the bed, and that thing will pick up if I put my feet down and it will turn on the light under the bed to a nice red so she won't be woken up. The green wall! So this, yet again, as you can tell, I really love DIY paneling. This has elevated my space so much. Like I said, moving into this place, it was just boring cold white. So I went with the October Mist, which is Benjamin Moore's color of the year for 2022. It's supposed to resemble more of the stem of a plant. And I think it nails it. It's basically like a nice warm green neutral. And I also went with, as you can see, these panels, these boards went all the way to the top, did it all the way around just because it really heightens the space. In terms of the walls in this room, these are actually steam by Benjamin Moore, which is more of a cream color. Big boy Ikea mirror from Ikea. I keep my ukuleles on the wall just because it allows me to pick it up and play whenever I'm feeling a bit more inspired. Like right now, but not right now. I'm busy. This is my wardrobe. It took me a while. I actually built this when I moved in. It was just a single shelf. So I built this from a place in the UK called A Place for Everything. It's amazing. It fits my needs. I got a shoe rack. I got lots of my standard clothes, my bigger clothes, my jumpers here, my gym clothes, and then multiple drawers. So much storage. These are actually little souvenirs I picked up from that reality show I was on, the Canary Islands. Uh, if you've seen the premiere, the first episode, uh, these guys come up in it part of a tradition on the first island to be visited in the Canaries, and I got to take them back with me. Well, that about does it for my flat tour. I'm gonna plop. Thank you guys so much for watching my flat tour. The lights have all just turned. <laughs> I actually have a little vibration sensor in the couch so that usually when I'm cooking, I don't have to say anything. As soon as I bring my food out, if I'm alone to watch TV and sit here, as soon as I sit down, the lights all turn to a nice aesthetic way like this, and then I watch TV. Not useful when you're filming a YouTube video. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having an interest in my flat, in, in this place that I've built out. It is so personal. It is basically an embodiment of who I am. I've tried to imbue my personality and what I love into this place and everything about how much I really care about studying different things and learning about interior design and learning about what looks good and making it my own with my own flair. I love it so much. And I'm just so happy and I'm so grateful that I actually have this space that I'm able to build out. Maybe it's because it took so much effort just to get the place, but it means that I'm always grateful for the space. It always is a place that just makes me feel so safe, so happy and so proud of myself to have um, built this place up. So thank you so much for uh, stopping on by. Hope you've enjoyed it. Like I said, hopefully we've got a plant video, maybe desk tour video, smart home tour, that stuff coming in the future-ish uh, whenever I get some time. But yep, that's the viewfinder. That's my house. Thanks for stopping on by. And I guess I'll get you a drink. You can sit on back and enjoy the show. I don't know, enjoy the show. What does that even mean? <laughs> um, how would I end this? Like that. Ha, 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 ha.